Welcome back to Fresh Food Therapy. Today's episode is gonna be a little bit of fun. Not much work, not much money, and definitely guaranteed to satisfy your family. We're gonna take a baked stuffed chicken dinner and turn it into a quick serve for your family for half the amount of money, a quarter the amount of time, and with all of the trimmings. So today, we're going to take a roasted rotisserie chicken and we're gonna turn it into a quick serve stuffed chicken. You ready? So summertime means corn and we found some beautiful sweet white corn for about 16 cents an ear. So what we're gonna do is we're going to prepare it very, very simply. We're gonna shuck them and then we're going to just boil them. What we're also gonna do is we're gonna break them in half so that they're easier to fit on the plate and also to work with. Although it looks more generous to have an entire ear of corn, sometimes for young children or even for adults, it's a little hard to handle. So you grab the corn and all you're gonna do is literally remove the outside shell and then remove as much of the silk as you can and then repeat for all of the ears that you have. When corn is boiled, it becomes tender, sweet and literally only needs a little bit of butter and salt. Sometimes it's so good you don't even need the butter or the salt. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in the pot, we're gonna rinse them with water to once again get all the silk off, and then we're gonna start them boiling. So what we're going to do is we're gonna prep the vegetable side dish and then we're gonna prep the vegetables for the stuffing. Today, the vegetable side dish is going to be yellow squash served with a little bit of roasted fresh rosemary. Uh, very, very simple, very quick dish, uh, light and enjoyable. Uh, the main thing to keep in mind is that you're going to be chopping these quickly and then you're gonna be sauteing them quickly. So this can be done towards the end in the last few minutes when you're prepping the meal. So to prep the yellow squash, we're gonna clip the top and the bottom, leaving us with the vegetable ready to go. We're gonna cut it in half, making half moons. And then what we're going to do is cut it just so that it's big enough that it sautés well, but that it doesn't melt into nothing. Another good aspect of this is because it is so quick to prepare, you can use this for many, many different meals. For the rosemary, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to ensure that the rosemary is soft and tender and then all you have to do is run your fingers around and pull down and the leaves will come off individually. A good way to measure rosemary for these dishes is that you want a few pieces um, in each serving. So one sprig like this should be about three servings worth of a vegetable. You wanna make sure they're separated and that they can easily move with the vegetables while they're being sauteed. Now for the stuffing, the prep is very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're gonna dice up fine uh, a, a little bit of celery and a little bit of onion in about the same volume. Almost all of the celery can be used. Trim the bottoms off 
And then to dice the celery quickly, what you can do is you can literally just slice it long ways in an even amount. This is also a good cut of celery if you are making tuna fish salad. And if you like, there's nothing wrong with running it a little bit more just to make the pieces a little bit smaller for quick saute. For the onion, we're going to once again cut the bottom Cut the top, and then peel off the layers you're not gonna be using for the recipe. Now we can use the Vidalia Chop Wizard for this, but because we're only really making one onion and we're going relatively quick, it doesn't really save as much time to do a small amount. So what we're gonna do is a traditional dice, which is slice evenly. And then we're going to cut up and down. Be very careful because when you're cutting onion, sometimes it'll slide depending on how old the onion is. And then what we're gonna do is just dice. If it gets to the point where it's sliding like that and it's a little dangerous, have no fear, just stop what you're doing. Put it on the cutting board and begin to mince it in a more controlled manner. And you'll see that a half an onion is about exactly the same amount of volume as two stalks of celery. What we're going to do now is we're going to saute this together until it's tender. It'll only take about maybe four or five minutes tops. So we're now gonna take the vegetables and quick saute them. It's the celery and the onions put into the pan. And we really only need them blanched, which means you're gonna cook them till they're softened and the water begins to, uh, to come out of them. Make sure they're coated with oil evenly. Now because this is expedited, that means we have to cook the vegetables to the point where they are very, very tender and ready to go. In a normal baked stuffed chicken, it's gonna spend two to three hours in the kitchen, in the, in the, it's gonna spend two to three hours in the oven. And that should allow anything that needs to cook up a little bit more, a little bit more time. But in this case, since it's literally going to be just heated up in the oven for about five to 10 minutes, we've got to make sure that these vegetables are almost to the point of being caramelized. So we're gonna saute the vegetables until they're tender. We're going to cook them to the point where the moisture starts coming out and the sugar start to crystallize. This makes the stuffing wonderful. In this case, because we're doing it on a shorter period, a shorter uh, timeline, we're going to actually make sure that they're well done. The reason for that is because the stuffing is gonna go into the oven just for enough time to get the chicken and the stuffing hot. So what you're looking for is you're gonna look for it to be browning around the edges and very, very tender. We've got a few more moments before it gets to that point, but if you look really closely, you should be able to see that the onions and the celery are starting to brown just a little tiny bit. Celery and the onions are now ready. We're gonna put them into a bowl to get them ready for prepping the stuffing. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna quick saute the yellow squash. We've got some beautiful color here with the onions and the celery. 
and that should make the stuffing a little bit more savory, a little bit more rich. So you don't have to clean the pan because the flavors aren't going to be that much dissimilar. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little bit of the extra virgin olive oil because in this case, the oil will change the flavor of the vegetable. We're going to put the olive oil into the pan and we're gonna take the yellow squash and put it in very, very carefully into the oil. We're gonna keep the rosemary out of the, the cooking at the moment. We're gonna add that in just a little bit. But we're gonna get the yellow squash sauteing and coated with the oil. You wanna coat it as quickly as possible because the yellow squash will begin to absorb any oil that's left in the pan. That's the other reason why we're using olive oil instead of normal vegetable oil, because olive oil has a particular flavor to it that actually enhances the vegetable. So now we've had the squash sauteing for about four or five minutes, and it's starting to look like it's starting to get tender. This is the point where we add the fresh rosemary to the dish. It's going to make it much more fragrant, and it's going to add a beautiful bouquet to the dish. At this point, it's also a good idea to add just a pinch of salt to give a little bit more flavor into the dish. You'll get a light sweetness to the, to the uh, yellow squash, but a pinch of salt will bring out a much more distinct flavor to the vegetable. And then if you'd like, um, you can also add a little bit of onion powder. It'll give a little bit more depth to the flavor of the vegetables. We're right at the point where we can take the yellow squash off the heat because it's cooked almost all the way through. And all we'll have to do is stick it and pan sear it for a moment or two to bring it up to temperature when we're ready to serve. And now we're going to start making the stuffing. So now we are ready to make the stuffing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Pepperidge Farm cubed country style stuffing. Very inexpensive, easy to reach for on the, on the aisle in the supermarket. Open the entire package up. Now it says on the back that this is nine servings. I will be completely honest with you. This is not nine servings. This is about five or six servings. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the breadcrumbs that are now dry and we're gonna very lightly mix in the celery and the onions so that it mixes evenly. And I'll tell you why we're gonna try to get the celery and the onions to mix evenly in just a second. Now that the celery and the onions are in, we're gonna mix so that they're all even. And the reason why we're mixing the celery and the onions in now is because in just a moment, we're gonna add chicken stock. And the chicken stock will moisten the stuffing up and get it prepped. But if you don't mix the celery and the onions in while it's dry, they'll clump up and you won't be able to get a good spread through the entire dish. Now that it's mixed, what we're gonna do is just open up a can of chicken stock or chicken broth. They're basically the same thing. And we're gonna use it to moisten up the bread stuffing. Once again, we're gonna just start mixing to ensure that the Chicken stock blends evenly into all of the breadcrumbs and they begin to soften. Now that the chicken broth is in it, you can actually see more easily how even the onions and the celery are mixing into the, the breadcrumb mixture. 
Now, if you find that they're still cubed kind of tightly and they're not soft, there's nothing that says you can't add a little bit more water to it to just get it to the point where it's moist. In this case, I'm feeling pretty good that the one can is enough. Get it ready for baking. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer the stuffing into the baking dish. And we're creating a nice roost for the rotisserie chicken. We're gonna take the chicken out. And we're gonna take the rest of the, the sauce and the oil and the moisture that's left from the chicken and we're gonna pour it over the top very gently of the stuffing. That'll keep the stuffing moist as it comes up to temperature and it'll also build in more flavor to the dish. Now we're going to place the chicken on the stuffing. We now take the chicken, which is over the stuffing, and we're gonna put it into the oven at about 315 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's gonna bring the chicken back up to full temperature and it's going to allow the stuffing to crisp up a little around the edges and turn golden brown. We now have the feast laid out in front of you and you've got a beautiful chicken, rotisserie, tender, moist, and covered with a little bit of fresh homemade stuffing. Okay, cheater, cheater stuffing. Some fresh boiled corn on the cob, some dinner rolls just at, at the last minute to add a little bit of fun to the dish, and our yellow squash with fresh rosemary sauteed. The dish should look like this when it's plated, and what you have in front of you should be enough to feed a family of six. The total cost was $27.72, so the cost proportion is about $4.60 but just between you and I, there's actually enough food here probably for leftovers as well, which means you're looking at maybe $4 or less per portion. I hope you enjoy your meal. It was a pleasure cooking for you, and we'll see you again on Fresh Food Therapy.